So today we're in Lake Brownwood State Park. It's a nice cozy little park. The campsites are short and narrow. Uh, some of them are long enough you get a 36 foot RVN fifth wheel. But you have trees on both sides. So it's uh, you got to maneuver to get yourself in there. Make sure you get your slides out and your awning if you want to use your awning. We're expecting some rain this week, so we're taking advantage of any dry spells. We're going for a little walk. Uh, it's really pretty. Lots of wildflowers in this park. So Lake Brownwood, in Brownwood, Texas. It's about three and a half hours, maybe close to four hours north of San Antonio area. And uh, nice trip, beautiful scenery. Uh, this time of year, a lot of wildflowers on, on the highways. So we're just coming off of a CCC uh, feature, uh, come down the hill here and do another camping loop, it looks like day use maybe. No islands out there to go kayaking to. So the trail is very narrow, not maintained as well as other parks. It's not used much. It doesn't look like it's used much. And there's a lot of stones in the path. But we just came from up there. It's not that steep of a climb. But there's a, a fire pit, a fireplace, a CCC type site. So now we come down to the road and to this other park area. So you can see the sites are not very long and these down here have water and electricity, picnic table and a fire ring. Some have the tent pads right in there. But we're, we, we like kayaking and we like to be near the water. So this would be an okay place to come down for a few days without full hookups and I'll be close to the water and then throw our kayaks in there and go kayaking. So sites uh, 47, 45, 46 are just tent sites. Uh, there's no water or electricity at these sites but you're pretty close to the water. Of course the water is up uh, it's been going over the spillway, so the water has come up a ways. It's probably been over that pad right there. But there's a small loop right here. In the, there's a 38 across over there, 39, 41, etc. All tents. So we were over there, we walked around, came across this little levee, and right in the middle of the levee was this walk over bridge. So you could have a little boat launch from that area, a little kayaking space over here.
the glass. This side over here is very modern. So this is the back side of this building. We're up there where those light fixtures are next to the fireplace. We're up there taking some video shots. This half of the building inside looks very modern. They got Saltillo tile, modern kitchen facility. Uh, the center part, as uh, I showed you through the window, is a little bit more rustic. Yeah, fireplace, large sitting area. This area in the back over there with some round tables. Yeah. So take that glare away. Can see inside there's some tables. I call this area the grand staircase. The staircase going up to that little overlook. But behind me, more stairs going down by the water. All right, so today we're walking a path or a trail that is uh, for bicycling as well. And But they have some geocache locations on this trail. So we're gonna see what we can find on the geocache trail. Should be fun. Haven't done much geocaching. Um, been looking at it and figured it. It should be a fun activity while you're out here camping to find some things and see. Well, here's my first geocache find. Uh, logged my name in the little piece of paper that's in there. And um, I didn't have any trinkets to put in there. But maybe as I learn this process, I'll pick up some and start leaving them behind. The trail is slightly slip, slippery today. We had a lot of rain yesterday. Am I leaving? Oh my gosh. You're picking up mud. No wonder my feet feel heavy. But there's a lot of open field. This is actually the, the only trail that you could ride a bike on. And uh, so far it's pretty easy to ride if you were on a bike. There was a section, it was kind of rocky. So you would have to have some maneuverability skill set to get around those rocks without falling off your bike. But it's still pretty. Walking you get the beauty of all the flowers. It's an open meadow. Lots of trees, blue bonnets. You can smell them. Yeah. Please keep me moving and help me on a mission traveling in an F-150 on the green zero trace off roads to stimulate the use of beautiful Quebec's green cycling path and elsewhere to make a nose stand to the Quebec government. Do not keep me, take me, log me, and drop me in another cache soon. Follow me, Chad doing Nikon Canada on geocaching.com.
this section is a little hairy for a bike. A lot of rocks. It's going downhill or uphill. Depending which direction you're going. A lot of stones. The tire's got to get past. And then it smooths out. I would say that 85 to 90 percent of the trail was smooth, unobstructed, muddy today, but easy biking with the exception of this section here. Mosquitoes are really bad today. We should have sprayed, but we didn't. So we're in a small lagoon area within Lake Brown Wood uh, State Park. Uh, there is some piers over there, or fishing piers. Also some boat piers where people put their boats out. Uh, there's a little bridge that you can go under to get into this area. It's kind of windy today, so we're going to brave going in that direction for a little bit and see how it goes. But uh, the waves are pretty high with the wind. Maybe the wind will die down. Well, we've made it this far. We're at the point of the other campgrounds that are by the water. Some of them are flooded. We walked through them the other day and took some video. And over there is the fishing pier. That's a trail that goes along the bridge of that hill right there. We had walked that when we came down and looked at these campsites over here. So it's the wind has calmed down. I wouldn't say it's died. Uh, we still got some resi residual waves that we have to battle as we kayak. Kayaking is more fun when it's just calm, but uh, when it's rough waters like this, you're, you're battling your, your kayak back and forth trying to keep it afloat. All right, so we're going to be heading in that direction and see if we see anything that of interest. That's what we like to do sometimes, just sit here and enjoy the peacefulness, quiet, just sort of floating along. Then we get pushed towards shore and we got a paddle. Way out there is the tent area that we passed, and where we were, where I was filming earlier, and you have a, a pier for fishing pier. That's how far we've gone on our kayaks. My arm is about to give up, so we're going to turn around and head on back. But we made it to the point over here. I, might, I need to peek around the point, see what's there. So this is around the point. We were just over there. Now we're over here. Not so much wind. Water is calmer. Because it's protected from the wind. But it's not that far in. Normally we'd like to find coves that we can just go in to that area and paddle around. They're normally much calmer, a lot more things to see. We're approaching the dangerous turtle meisters. There he goes, kaploosh.
once we were floating in one of these coves we saw a wolf or a coyote in that area but not this particular part kayaking in waters like these it's very easy you're not bouncing around and just slightly paddle and you move along but I'll take a short video when we get out there to the choppy waters and you'll see how choppy it is just trying to get around well, we prefer this kind of weather where it's cloudy partly sunny and light winds In the lakes that have a lot more coves, it's a lot more fun. So we just made the turn around that point of that area we were just in, and you can see how much choppier the water is here. I can barely keep my kayak lined up. You can see Laura up there; she's bouncing a lot. And we're we got a slight headwind, so we got to paddle into the wind against these waves um, about a mile mile and a half or so okay it looks like we found our first geocache for today it was really hard to find i don't know if this camera is looking down on that or not looks like it is okay it was a little difficult to find we were all over this area here but the hint uh, that was given to us on on the app gave us more details as to where it was people left some some surprises in there fresh flowers a couple of flowers they seem to be pretty pretty fresh uh, the last name on the log is april 26th but there's no pencil so if people are like us we can't write it down we're just doing it digitally yeah we didn't bring any Pencil. So what we've learned so far for our geocache kit, we need a stick, gloves, a grabber, a flashlight, and a pencil. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sticking my hands back in there. So I'm guessing it's this big. I'm still 18 feet away. So not there. Going backwards. Oh, plus or minus 16 feet. <laughs> That's significant. You want this? Okay, first I'm looking for ribbons. Yeah, right. Now see, you're getting farther away again. It's got to be this. I looked in there, I didn't see anything in there. Oh, that's hollow too. Yeah, and I looked in there. Did you look under? No. So. Horizontal bison. Oh. Is a hint. Okay. I touched something. Okay. 22, 5 feet, 29 feet. What's in this area?
Hey, I found it. Sweet. How small can you get? That's stinky. It's probably the same size that's down inside of that oh, hollow yeah. log. Yeah. Just a piece of paper where, where you wouldn't mark your where that you were here. So this is the uh, Comanche Trails Campground at Lake Brownwood State Park. Uh, several of these campsites have uh, tables and fireplaces or fire pits that are built by the CCC when the CC was here building up this park in the 1930s but uh, it's a pretty cool place to visit looks like they used to have a fire pit here built by the CCC but they've since then View. This is the lodge, but this is a really nice view. Loma Vista, KS. Loma is a mound. Vista is a view. So the view. We're we're on the Loma. Oh, I see. Vista. All right. I was hoping that we weren't intruding on somebody's party. Right. There aren't any cars here. Yeah, that's All what the I, That was what I was thinking. No cars. So we're going to try one more trail today. We finished the bike ride. That was about five miles and such. Find a whole bunch of geocache. We had already walked that trail. So we went back on it halfway through on the bikes and then went out to the road. So the rest of the park. But this one is the wildlife watch trail or also known as the Texas Oak Trail. About three quarter of a mile goes out to the point it go, it's going to go down. I'll try to get some video of that. Otherwise, we'll catch a little snippets here and there. There's a couple of geocaches on this trail that I'm going to try to capture and see how that goes. Later. We're 78 feet away from the geocache. Forty eight feet. Ouch. So it's going to be somewhere here. Well, we found that last cache. Uh, it's damaged, so the log and every all the contents are wet. Not much you could do about that. But it did log an entry that it was found and that uh, there's some damage. So off to the next one. I see purple, pink, yellow, red, white. There's a blue bonnet. One blue bonnet. 
quite a oh, few. Nope, there's some more by the cactus. So pretty. Yeah. And all the butterflies just make it alive. Yeah. We are contributing to the delinquency of the wildlife. Oh, he's tipped over. You're gonna get rug burned, buddy. Dragging your tongue on the tablecloth. Right. Oh, there, there you pulled go. it in. Roll it up. Yeah, he's crazy. He's attacking himself. He's pecking on his foot. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe.